local police this morning a warning residents after a string of thefts involving catalytic converters. Police say they've received over a dozen calls. You gotta be kidding me. So let's be honest folks, this is a subject that's all over the news, whether it's on TV or online, people are stealing converters. And I wanted to do this video for a long time because I want to teach people why they're doing it and how can, if it affects us directly, how can we get out of it at a lesser cost and do it maybe ourselves so that it doesn't rob us twice. So here I have some samples of converters, catalytic converters, not Cadillac, catalytic. And you can find these parts at 1AAuto.com. They've been around since the early 70s, maybe a few late 60s, but those were real high-end cars. And they're worth a lot of money due to the materials that's in them. There's precious metals, palladium, rhodium, and platinum. And they are worth a lot of money per ounce. And it's what's in here. This is an old aftermarket one, believe it or not. This is factory manifold, and this is a factory manifold one. So you have, usually if you have a V6 or a V8, you're gonna have four converters in your truck. If you have a four cylinder, you're gonna have two. That's just as simple as it goes. Usually on a four cylinder, you're gonna have one right off the manifold. If not, it's bolted right at the manifold below it, if it's not part of it. These ones, nobody's really going after because they have to get in your engine. <laughs> they have to get under the hood. It's easier for them to have one guy jack it up, or person, shall I say, and then they go under with a sawzall with a metal blade Jing, jing, and they cut it and they rip it out and they run away. Unfortunately, that's how it goes down. So on a manifold one, that's where factory is where all the real precious metals are. Aftermarket, um, they can get away with not putting as much of it in. And what happens is back in the old days when precious metals were not as, as precious as they are now and higher end per ounce, an aftermarket company would make it and they would say the converter is supposed to be this whole length they would shrink it down, and that's why it would cost less than the OE style, which is a factory style. Well, they couldn't do that anymore because they would always set codes. So now the aftermarket ones are top notch. They are filling them right to the way they are, how they're supposed to work, so they work properly to the emissions of that car. So they got more expensive also because of the material they put in them, but they're doing the job, but they're not as expensive sometimes as direct factory, which will help your wallet. But I want to talk about when they're not kind to you and they just cut flanges off, they just take the saw and they're just waiting. They're cutting it and they're going. That's what it's about. It's not about end result or what you have to deal with. All right, so let's just say this nightmare happens to you. It's unfortunate, but it did. So I want to tell you the first thing you need to do, obviously, if you're at your house and you have availability to jack your own car up because you have jack and jack stands, then do so. If not, get it towed to your local garage that you deal with and trust. Have them bring it up in the air. And this is pretty much a visual you're going to see underneath your car. You're going to find the exhaust system. So here we have one single pipe that runs down the center and it goes up to a converter. Now this wasn't stolen, it's not broken, but at one point it was rusted enough that somebody cut what we call factory flange. They cut the factory flange right out of it. So here we have a great example of what I'm talking about. This converter wasn't stolen. This is the one I was talking about earlier where the converter is all part of the manifold, goes right up in. Now the factory on this would have a flange right here, probably about in this area right there. This piece would be all one piece pressed out from a machine on the day it was made and it would have a flange. This is what we call a flange where this two bolt system. And then this round circle, a gasket sits in there and it looks like that. Now on this side, the same exact setup was like that. So you had another flange on this side, welded from the factory, all one piece. And they bolted that together, it came together with a bolt and gaskets. So what, this is a weak point, because it's cut open, the environment gets to it, the gasket breaks down after a while, the exhaust heats up, the gasket breaks, then this little piece of metal that's been punched out and thinned rots, the flange falls off, you go to your shop or you yourself look at it and go, oh, I don't want to spend, now I have to, I have to buy a converter because I need the flange because that piece got all thin. This piece rotted off from that end. I'm not doing that. And then somebody says, ah, I got a solution for you. I'm going to put this piece in right here 
and I'm going to weld it and weld it. So now you don't have to buy the rest of the exhaust there or there because this is stainless steel and so is this. But they put in just a piece of metal that's not stainless steel. This is going to rot. It's a weak point. But for this situation, it was a, an older car. It's not a stolen converter and it's the best way to do this. I personally would have cut the pipe here and here and maybe put this adapter in and not weld it, but put two clamps. Only because this is the weak point, like I said, and it's going to keep breaking down way before the stainless steel does. So if this rots out again, they can put another piece in like this with clamps. They don't have to keep cutting back and back and back and weld in a piece in because you cannot re-weld right here. You have to cut it, cut where the weld is, and adapt. Well, guess what? Look how close you are on this side. You can't put another piece in. Now they're stuck buying the whole mid pipe all the way back because they cannot keep clamping a piece on because they chose to weld it. This is what I would do. I would always do this in clamps. It passes state inspections and it will work for a long time. This is great, looks great, but guess what? Like I said, you just keep having to cut and chase it. All right, so now I kind of keep going over clamps and weld and I just want you to be comfortable, I guess, is what the term I'm trying to say. If you are in the situation I don't want you spending more money than you need to. Say so you have a car that's five years old, right? Someone unfortunately takes the converters out of your car. Now you're stuck. But that car should be within five years old from now. Has stainless steel exhaust on it. Now stainless steel, it's not easy to weld. Doesn't come out good. Uh, you can see in these pictures right here, we have some bad weld on stainless steel. And you didn't get your money's worth. Like it was just, someone's taking your money. And I don't want that to happen to you. So in this scenario is where I would use a converter, universal style, or aftermarket OE direct style fit. They're, 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 they work. They don't worry about the honeycombs anymore. They're up to standards, but clamp it on, especially with stainless steel, clamp it on. So that way it's going to last even longer. So if that piece in between rots, you don't have to weld. Like I said, it's just going to keep chasing that weld and it doesn't come out right. And I want you to see what a good weld looks like. It should be a straight line of a smooth liquid. That metal melts down and you, you have to take time to learn how to do this. And some people say, oh yeah, I can weld. Listen, I can run, but I'm not going in a marathon to win a ribbon, let me tell you. Well, everybody can weld because they go to some place and they get a $200 welder and all that. But to do it right, it goes up in price and you're gonna pay some big money for a good welder not just the material or the machine, but the person doing it. That's trained, that takes time to learn. You wanna get your money's worth. If they do this, that's well and good. It's sealed up, it's gonna last. But if this pipe ends up rotting, the weld's gonna be good, but then you just keep chasing it. Get these adapters and put this on and clamp it on. You can do that yourself in your yard, save time and money, and also in the future, less aggravation. What's your message to those who are watching this newscast right now? My message is, hopefully this doesn't happen to you. It's not a fun situation, but it is going across the nation, and it's just something we have to deal with, unfortunately. Let's not get robbed twice. Let's try to take care of it. Easy, do it ourselves, spend less money, and not mess up our car for further in the future with tons of welds all over it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell because then it turns on all the notifications so you won't miss any of our great videos. So just act like you're digging something out, give it a count of five and then get out. Until you get tired. Good. Hey Sue, how are you? Hey, morning Bob. Another day, another dollar, heading to work. You know how it is. Ma, it's the coolest thing. Yeah, the news people here and everything, yeah. I know it's a bad situation, but hey, I'm on the TV, I'm live.